This is Dream Chaser Carrie Olson, and you're listening to the Chasing Dreams podcast with Amy J. Welcome to Chasing Dreams podcast with Amy J. Amy believes that realizing a life without regrets is achieved by taking chances, chasing your dreams, making moves, and overcoming your doubts. The Chasing Dreams podcast will help you overcome life's obstacles, believe in your potential, and inspire you to face your fears. And now here's the woman who is passionately pursuing her dreams, Amy J. Hey, Dream Chasers, this is Amy J, and thank you so much for tuning in to episode number 33 of Chasing Dreams. Today's guest is Carrie Olson, and she is one of the nicest people I have virtually met, and one person that you guys will have a great time listening to and hopefully take some lessons from. And so let me tell you a little bit about Carrie. She created an online course called the VoiceOver Success Intensive, which I took part of and loved every minute of. And so after booking her first national radio campaign, shortly after beginning her voiceover training, she quit her job to do voiceover full time, which is crazy to me. Her ferocious marketing and networking techniques combined with extensive training and study landed her jobs with companies like Kmart, Taco Bell, Bank of America, REI, Land Rover, and lots of other companies that she can't still believe she's gotten to work with. When she's not traveling, Carrie can be seen frequenting coffee shops in Kansas City, Missouri, where she lives with her husband, Derek, and daughter, Amelie. So, guys, welcome, Carrie. How's it going, Carrie? So, so good. I'm so happy to be here with you, Amy. I'm excited because, you know, I I had a wonderful time in your course. Thank you so much. I'm so glad. I loved having you in it. And you're still offering it, right? Yes, it's still, I'm opening it right now pretty much once a month. I have a new launch and I accept new students in. Guys, the links to um, the intensive will be in the show notes, so be sure to check it out. If you have any interest in voiceover, Carrie is a wonderful Yoda for you <laughs> and someone who will help guide you. But before we, before we get to how you got there, Carrie, did you always have an interest in voiceover? Man, that's such an interesting question. I have to say yes and no. Yes, in the sense that I loved doing voices as a kid, and I would always do all kinds of different accents and and things like that. And I think I liked the idea of acting. I never really wanted to be an on camera actor, but I I was kind of a, I was really shy. But in my quiet you know moments by myself, I was I liked acting things out. I really loved reading, so I loved getting into stories. But I never knew that voiceover was a career, so I never had the um, the idea to pursue it as a career until really just two years ago. So all your life, you're here, you're, you're watching maybe cartoons and, you know, I don't know if you play video games, but all these things have voiceover. Did you, did it hit you that these are voiceover things or did you just think that they were actors and actresses who are professionals doing it? So it feels, I feel really ridiculous saying this, but I, it never even occurred to me that there were people out there doing this. I never had the thought, huh, I wonder who the person is behind that, you know, cartoon character's voice. Just never had the thought. So yeah, it was, it, I was totally oblivious. And had I known, had that occurred to me, I probably would have pursued it or looked into it, but I didn't. So it's almost by chance that I even discovered voiceover as a career. If you only realized it about two years ago, what have you been doing before that? So before that, I worked a lot of different jobs. I I majored in um, business administration, international business administration, did, you know, some odd jobs. I worked for an oil and gas company. I did HR. Uh, But really, it was when I got to HR that the journey to the direct journey, uh, sort of more direct journey, at least, voiceover started because I got into training. And this is when online training was really just taking off. And so the company that I was in wanted to start doing online training for for the company. And I was kind of the most tech savvy person in the department. So I got to do all of the, the online training stuff. And I loved it. So I really got into online training so much that, so that I pursued a different job that allowed me to only do online training. But I was developing these courses. I wasn't um, narrating only. But I did get to narrate some of my own courses. So that was kind of my first introduction to really doing voiceovers was when I was narrating my own online courses. And even that was uh, kind of unofficially, right? You're doing it for yourself in 
that you're doing it for your own courses. Exactly. So I wasn't getting paid on top of that. It was just part of my job. You know, you make the course, you also read the the narration for it. Now, what was it like, though, doing that? I mean, realizing that you're here, your voice is being played over these slides, if you will, uh, and that you're bringing life to them. I really liked it. Um, again, it, it's funny because I, I would have to go, both of the, the companies that I worked for where I did narration for e- e-learning courses, we made little uh, you know makeshift booths for me to record in. Usually they were just abandoned offices or janitor's closets and I would go in and read, but again, never thinking, oh, this is something that people do regularly. But I really enjoyed the process. So again, I think that in my mind, I, I was thinking, well, I just need to keep creating more online courses so that I can keep narrating them and never thought to pursue, hey, maybe I should just narrate other people's courses. Well, it sounds like you had, you kind of fell into it in the sense that you always had this love and then suddenly the ability to do what you're enjoying kind of came up and combined with your your natural talent for teaching. I mean, mm. Did that all just kind of naturally come together or what was it that said, hey, maybe I could do this for a career voiceover? So it wasn't until I was listening. So in addition to uh, narrating online courses, I podcast. So I've been doing that for several years. My husband and I have a podcast together and then I've done some solo projects as well. Um so one thing that goes along with that is I love to listen to podcasts. And so one day as I was driving to work, I turned on a podcast I had, hadn't heard before. It was called The Go For It Show, and it's hosted by someone named Tyson Webb. And it's a show similar to yours, Amy, where he talks about or he interviews people who have unique position, unique jobs or have uh, kind of struck out on their own to, to um, make a career. And one of them was an interview with um, a lady named Allison Steele, whose name you've probably heard me say before. She's yes. my voiceover coach. And so he was interviewing Allison and it literally wasn't until that moment where I was listening to this interview of Allison Steele, who's a an amazing 20-year veteran voice actress in LA, talking about what her day looks like and, and how she gets to just read all day long, you know, scripts in her booth. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's, that's what I need to do. And so it, it was from listening to that podcast episode that, that really um, started moving the ball forward for me. I called her up, I booked a, a consultation with her and we started working together. And it wasn't too long after that, that I started booking voiceover jobs. Now that's amazing. Cause I, I know you, your course was the first one I was aware of and I hadn't thought, Hey, let me try and find a voiceover coach. At the time, I mean, I know there are so many books on voiceover uh, acting and what to do, but yours was the first course I've seen. And so you had a guide help you. Do you think it's necessary to have someone uh, guide you through voiceover? It actually, it's not necessary, but I think that it is helpful. I think that if there's someone that you can talk to and be in communication with, if for nothing else, just to be able to bounce ideas off of them or, you know, the industry, if you're, if you're not familiar with it, there are things that you're just going to have questions about. So to have someone that you can just say, hey, this just happened. How do I handle that? I think that's absolutely helpful. So you can have that in the form of a a mentor, a coach, a teacher, a friend. You know, if you're in some forums, that's helpful. Um, but for me, I know that my career moved forward faster because I had that help. So I could, could I've done it on my own? Probably. But would I have had the same experiences? Would my path look the same? Probably not. And you've been doing it for two years and you've done some amazing things. And guys, I will have a link to one of her latest ones, which was a commercial for Kmart that you did, right? Uh, yes. Ultimate Game Party, the aftermath, yes. right? Uh-huh. Yes. Well, You just did that. It's amazing. It's for Kmart. And you've done so many different ones. Have you seen an evolution in your experience and your abilities? Like, Mm -hmm. do you feel like you could do more than you were able to do when you first started? Absolutely. And uh, it's interesting you say evolution. I was was thinking of the the recording session when I was recording Kmart. And it's actually, I recorded a behind the scenes of it for the class. I don't know if you've had a chance to see it yet, but it's in the in the um, the member group or the the member website for the voiceover success intensive, and thinking about that session compared to my first national session, um, there's just so much more confidence. I'm not as nervous about being judged. So one of the really hard things about voiceover, specifically with directed sessions, is a lot of times the the director will say, "Now give me a take like this, or give me three takes in a row." 
and you as the voice actor deliver the takes. And then it's just radio silence for sometimes minutes while the director is, you know, talking to whoever else is in the room with them and you can't hear any of it. So it's easy to let your mind go and think, oh my gosh, they're judging me. They hated it. And, uh, so over the, you know, my time of doing more and more of those sessions, I've definitely grown in my ability to just, to just think I'm providing a service. I'm helping them out. They hired me for a reason. I'm going to do my job and not let it get to my head too much about, you know, are they liking it or not? And just remembering that they're on my team. So they're not there to judge. We're all there to try and get to a specific outcome. Okay. For those who aren't familiar with voiceover or how it works, can you give a rough overview of the process? Yeah. Yeah. So there, um, there are so many different kinds of voiceover, but I'll, I'll give the kind of just a typical flow of how it might go. So there's, if there's a, let's say a local car dealership who wants a, a commercial done. So the client, and maybe they would, maybe they hire out an ad agency. Maybe they have an in-house creative team. Maybe it's just the owner and he's the person who's writing the script and all of that. Whoever it is, there's someone who's writing a script. They're then going to seek out a voice talent, someone who's going to read the commercial for them. And there are several ways that they can do that. There are online casting sites now. So a lot of times they'll just post the job um, on an online casting site. Most sites, uh, you can post a job for free. And then voice actors, uh, if the job matches their profile and they're a member of that site, they can audition for that job. So it would, you know, maybe they get emailed or, you know, if the, if the client sends it through an agency rather than you would, the voice talent would get notified through their agent and you would audition for it. So you get a portion of the script, maybe the whole thing, and you read it and you record it yourself and then you send it back to the client. The client then listens and reviews all of these auditions that are coming in, picks the one that they like and hires that that voice actor. And from there, um, most voice actors today will record most of their jobs from a home studio. So right now I'm in a closet <laughs> in my house uh, that's converted to a home studio. Um, I also have a studio space that I rent, but I do most of it right here. Um, so the voice talent would would uh, get in contact with the client and they you know, might talk a little bit about direction, how they want things to sound. And then the voice talent would just record it, usually on their own time, and send it back to the client. Now, sometimes there might be a directed session, which I talked about before, which is more when the client is there with you virtually, maybe over Skype or phone patch or something like that, and kind of directing you as you read. But that's that's kind of the process. And then after you deliver the recorded files, the client you know, sticks the music in there and adds the video if it's a commercial, a TV commercial, and then that's that's pretty much the process, and you get paid. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a testament to technology and how things have changed with time that you don't have to be in Hollywood, guys, if you want to do voiceover. I mean, that's one thing I learned from 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 Carrie is you could be anywhere. Absolutely. What's the craziest place you've recorded? <laughs> oh, the yeah, there craziest has to be place. one. I'm pretty sure there, there is. Um, so my family went on a five month road trip in a travel trailer, uh, in let's see, 2015. And so I've recorded from the bathroom of a travel trailer on the highway before. Wow. And I have all, which I don't recommend because you have to, um, you can hear this, the traffic going by. So you have to wait in between cars going by to record. But that was, it was like an ASAP thing where they, they said, we need this right now. That doesn't happen often for me, but occasionally, um, but then I've also recorded from cemeteries. Uh, this is one of my secrets because when we're traveling and, you know, you don't have a hotel room, you're in a an RV park, which those are noisy. Every city has a cemetery and cemeteries are always quiet. <laughs> and that's the thing that you need as a voice actor. So I've driven to cemeteries, recorded from my car before. That's happened. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that was a that's a good question. I like that you asked that. <laughs> <laughs> I have I did not see that coming. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um I see why you do it and I get that. Um I I think I'm more in awe of the fact that you you had the wherewithal to go to a cemetery. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it it's it's tough when you're traveling. So, you say you say why I do it. I don't do it. I've done it. <laughs> So I'm, I'm not like driving around recording in cemeteries all the time, <laughs> but, um, but in a, in a pinch when, you know, I'm like, where do I go to get this quiet? Because I've, I've got a spot that I'm, that I've got to get done. It, it worked. We'll just put it that way. So one of those things where, where time sensitive <laughs> mm-hmm. kind of things, right? I mean, cause the industry I'm sure is deadline heavy. 
It is. And, and depending on, you know, what your, what your career looks like, there are so many different types of voice actors. You know, there are the people who are doing movie trailers and making millions. And then there are people who are, you know, just helping friends out with YouTube videos, you know, and, and it's kind of a hobby. So, and everywhere in between. So you're, you might be a super, you might have a super deadline heavy type career and it might be pretty laid back. Mine's kind of in the middle. Most of my stuff I can do on my own time, but I do have directed sessions and, and kind of ASAP type auditions occasionally. So yeah, it's, it's good to, to have those options and uh, when you need them. Now, Kara, you've been in the industry, what, two years or so. And so you've done a number of gigs and you've helped people, I mean, from, mm -hmm. from the course and whatnot. Would you say that it's age sensitive being a voiceover actor? So I, I don't think that it is. It's for, for me specifically, I've done spots for children. I've done teen uh, I've done, you know, my own age, I'm early thirties, um, and middle-aged and I've had one where I was a senior. So if it's, it's not the same as on camera acting where it, you have to look the way that you sound. So if you can sound a certain age, then it doesn't really matter how old you actually are or what you look like, and which is another great benefit of, of the industry. I mean, the other thing is, is that you could be any age kids could even do voiceover acting. Is that fair to say? Ab absolutely. I have a, an eight-year-old niece who booked a job uh, not too long ago, and she made $200 on, a, on a, um, a commercial for, it was just an internet commercial, and, and she booked it. Now, did you help her with that? Yes, I did. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, to, to start off so young, because, I mean, you said yourself, when you were young, you were mm -hmm. excited and enthralled by it, but you didn't know more. Right. Yeah. And she, she just has a real interest for it. She's a natural actor. And so how it happened was she saw me recording and just got really interested. And so I let her kind of use some of my equipment and she, we actually made a little radio show together, uh, which was fun. And then, um, I don't remember if I asked her or if she asked me, but, uh, somehow we decided that she would start auditioning and she did a few auditions and won one. So, um, yeah, if she, if you're have kids and they're interested in this kind of thing. Uh, there was actually a kid who went through uh, the intensive several and one of them was just really, really talented. He's doing a great job. Um, so there's definitely work out there for kids. Yeah. See, guys, the family that does voiceover together mm -hmm. gets closer together. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, it, it, cause you're right. It, it does take a lot. And it's not to say though, that everyone can do every type of voiceover. I think I, one thing I learned from the intensive is, you know, depending on what you're looking for, what is being asked for, sometimes you may be able to do it and sometimes you, you can. Right. You know? Yes. Yeah. You need to be aware of your own limitations while at the same time, always trying to expand your range. You know, if you can work on accents and, and age ranges, always work on those things, but don't, you know, if, if you sound like me, don't audition for something that's asking for an 80 year old man. Does you know, that, do you think that happens? <laughs> I think so. Maybe not that extreme, but I think that people stretch it and, you know, it ends up wasting their time as voice talent and also the, the, um, client's time because they're, they're trying to find this perfect voice and they're having to weed through people who, you know, don't just don't fit the, the bill. What would you say is, is something that a person interested in voiceover would be surprised to learn about the industry? Something they'd be surprised. Well, I think that um, a lot of people think that if you have a good voice, then you can do it. And, and I'm, as, as you know now, Amy, that it's so much more than just having a good voice. So there's a whole lot of acting involved. I remember uh, several times I've mentioned to people that I had a, a coach and they would laugh at me and say, why do you have a coach to teach you how to talk? You know how to talk. We all know how to talk. That's ridiculous. But they don't understand all of the nuances and, and things that go into what it takes to be a good voice actor. So probably just that, um, that it does take acting skill, that it's not all about your voice and that it's more than just talking, a lot more than just talking. Yes, and I'll share the, this quick anecdote about when I was in the voiceover intensive with Carrie, and she does practical sessions where you can work out with a group, and you know you read a script, and you you're kind of getting giving feedback and direction and suggestions, and you have to adjust, right? Mm -hmm. And so I remember 
there was one direction you gave me, like, to, I forget what the word was, and it was the end of the sentence. It was something like uh, changing. And you have to, you wanted me to go lower on mm-hmm. it. I could not do that. Oh, right. <laughs> to save my life, I could not do that. If you told me I would get a million dollars, if I would just go lower, it wasn't working. Yeah. It's not easy always to take direction. It's hard. It's interesting because there are certain, I think I know what you're talking about when you, uh, sometimes, so I'm going to read um, a sentence here that's just right in front of me. What obstacles were in your path? So if you have it in your head, what obstacles were in your path and you're going up, for some reason, it's, it's extremely difficult to get that path to go down if you've got it going up in your head. And you can even say, okay, I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down. What obstacles were in your path? And it just goes up every time. It's really hard to control. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Okay. And yeah, you were telling me, you know, just try to go down, try to go down. <laughs> you know, I took every other direction, but I could not for using your example, I could not get paths to go down. Could you try and do that? Can you do path down? What obstacles were in your path? I couldn't do that, guys. That was down. That, so she had said it high earlier or up and that was down. I couldn't do that. And I think it was just that sentence. I mean, I probably could do it for something else, but. You're right. Sometimes you have to step away and then come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a normal thing. I've, I've seen that a lot where, it, again, it gets in your head a certain way and you can't get your voice to cooperate. And like you said, you just have to step away and, and practice it. Now, Carrie, you've, you're doing voiceover now as a full-time job, right? Mm-hmm. Like football players, they, you know, there are certain tools for them, their hands are money makers. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for you, your voice is your mm-hmm. money maker. How do you take care of yourself and your voice, especially with the weather changing, uh, colds and stuff like that? Is that something you try to take an extra effort to do, or just kind of hope against hope? Oh, absolutely! I take an extra effort. So, uh, drinking a lot of water. I keep remedies in the house all the time, and this is something that I learned from my voiceover coach uh, because she told me a story about how one one season she lost a certain amount of money because she couldn't talk. You know, she, she'd gotten sick. And so um, her advice is to oh, never just kind of wait it out and see what happens. The second you start to feel something, try to nip it in the bud. So I have little remedies, again, from Allison. Obviously drinking a lot of water, doing things like uh, hot tea. She has, uh, there's a supplement called Andrographis that she recommends. Um, trying to, you know, stay out of, extreme temperatures, not yelling, not whispering, not clearing your throat a lot, um, honey, uh, garlic cloves, all kinds of things. So yeah, it's definitely a a concern. (laughs) I mean, I think sometimes people take for granted the fact that, you know, it's not just saying things. It's It's not just you have to take care of your voice. There's a little bit more involved in voiceovers than having a conversation like we are right now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's about being able to communicate and to relate with someone. I think that we can all probably think of a situation where we were watching television or maybe doing something else and the TV was on and a commercial came on and, and all of a sudden you turn your head because you think, oh, that that's talking to me. And so anytime that happens, that voice actor got into a mindset to, like they had a, an avatar in their head. They had an audience that they were picturing and they were able to uh, read their copy because they're just in a booth reading to nobody, but you have to get into that mindset of, okay, I'm, I'm, uh, in my head, I'm sitting down with a close friend and I'm, I'm, we're just talking about this. Like you would talk, like we would are talking to each other right now. And those are the types of reads that, that, uh, clients want because they want their audience to feel like they're being spoken to. And it's, it's interesting that it, it, that's one of the things you guys learn with, um, Carrie's intensive. Cause I thought I knew what there was with voiceover. I mean, I've read books, I've looked online, but you learn a lot and there's a practical application. And I think there is something, it's a big, vast space. It's a new world. Mm -hmm. And sometimes having a guide to help you is great. So whether it's Carrie or someone else, I do think people need someone to help them. Mm -hmm. But what would you say is the minimum a person would need to do voiceover if they couldn't afford uh, a coach Mm -hmm for example, but they wanted to get into it. 
Yeah, I love this because there are so many great free resources out there right now. And one of my favorite podcasts and a place that I've learned a lot from, it's a voice acting mastery podcast by Crispin Freeman. And Crispin is, he's a mostly an animation voice actor, but a lot of what he uh, teaches is applicable to both, you know, if you're doing commercial or animation. So I would start with free podcasts, um, free ebooks. There's a book by someone, I think his name is Rob Marley. He gives away a free ebook. You can find it on Smashwords. And uh, it's got a lot of great information. I have a free guide actually on um, on my site that um, has some, some good information on it. So um, at a bare minimum, you need to know about the industry. So definitely... What I did when I first uh, got started, in addition to my lessons, I just dug in. And it sounds like you did the same thing, Amy, just devouring everything I could find, learning about this new world, this new industry. Um, I think that's important. And then, of course, um, at a minimum, you're going to need a, a place to record and some equipment to record on. So if you're going to be uh, you know, getting paid to do work, you need to have a good microphone. You need to have recording software. You need to know how to edit your, your auditions. And again, YouTube <laughs> is great for stuff like that. You can... You know, you can find uh, just about anything you need uh, for free. It just, you know, you've got to dig. So, um, yeah, trying to think if there's anything else at a minimum that you would need. But uh, training, you, I mean, practice, definitely practice on your own. Pay attention to, to voice out, voiceovers that you hear around you. So I used to fast forward commercials and now I turn them up. You know, I, I listen to what, what's trending, what's going on, uh, both, you know, radio, TV, um, listen to different channels at different times of day and, and become a student and start studying uh, voiceover that you hear and not just TV and radio. Listen in your, when you're in the grocery store and uh, we were taking a walk yesterday. We pushed the, the button on a you know, street light when you cross the button and mm-hmm. someone said, wait. And I thought someone did the voiceover for that. Someone got paid to say, wait, when you push the button across the street. Uh, so just really be aware, be a stu- become a student of all of the voiceover that, that's around you because there's a ton. I mean, when you put it like that, there's someone who did a voiceover for Siri. Yes. Uh, Susan Bennett, I think, is her name. That's amazing. I didn't even think about that till you just mentioned the, the signal. Yeah. Yeah. And the interesting thing about Siri is um, she, she didn't do it for Apple. She did it years before. And uh, Apple bought it. So I think that she was surprised even to hear herself. You know, <laughs> I wonder how that revelation is. <laughs> like, right? Oh my gosh, that's me in the Apple iPhone. That's gotta be. That's gotta be surreal. Like, did that just happen? <laughs> right. In my met, and then try to find out what happened. How did that come to play? Exactly. Now, Carrie, is this like any other industry voiceover? Is there like a a, a group an association or anything? There is a, there have been several that I've seen kind of come and go. The one that is, uh, it's doing really well right now. It's called World Voices Organization. It's wovo.org. And uh, it's, a, it's a nonprofit that's, uh, their tagline is, we speak for those who speak for a living. And uh, they're kind of just out for the interests of voice actors. So you can, there are two levels of membership, I believe. One is professional and one is associate. Uh, to, to join at the professional level, you have to, um, have a history of of doing professional voiceover work, but it's a great organization. They have um, different meetings and things that you can attend via Zoom. Great leadership, uh, yeah. And then and then there are conferences all over as well. So, are do you you've done commercials? Mm-hmm. Have you done audiobooks? I have. You've done e training. Mm-hmm. Have you done video games? No, I haven't. Is it on your bucket list? Like, what is your bucket list? Like, yeah. you've done so many now. I mean, I just named mm. a few. But what else is there for you that you're like, I got to get this at some point? So I would love to do an animated series. And I've done a cartoon before, but it didn't get picked up. So uh, I did like the pilot in the first episode. Um, That's exciting. That sounds like it'd be fun. Oh, it was so much fun. So much fun. And especially I did two characters in the show. And one of them had, she started off with a British accent. That was the direction. But eventually it morphed into more of like a transatlantic. <laughs> we, she's European, but we can't tell where she's from. So that was a lot of fun. And she was like a, a diva supermodel. So it's just fun to get to play with those types of characters. Um, so I'd love to get like an animated series. I'd love to do... Um, 
more uh, like a, a regular national campaign. So uh, for TV specifically. So I've done um, radio national campaigns and I've done national TV commercials, but nothing that I would consider like a, a big campaign. I would love to be like the voice of fill in the blank. I think you could do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think we're, I think it's just a matter of finding the right one and then being like, I knew her when. <laughs> like, I mean, because you, you've done, I, I said it in your introduction, the bio. I mean, there's so many you've already done. Taco Bell, Bank of America. I mean, those are, those are not small deals at all. I think you're on your way. It's exciting. Thanks. I hope so. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled to be doing what I'm doing. I love doing what I, it's, it's a treat every day. So, um, you know, yes, I still have goals for what I want to do, but I, I love this. It's just so much fun. I feel like it's what I was made to do. And as we talked about it, it's something that I didn't know was a thing. So I, uh, even that part is kind of like a happy surprise, you know, it's, yeah. um, so I, I love getting to do what I do. Now, looking back, is this what you expected it to be once you realized you could do it? Or is it different or better or worse than what your expectations were first going in? I don't really know. And let's see, I'm trying to think of my initial expectations. I knew what Allison did, but I don't think I expected my career to look like hers. Honestly, I think that I my career moved forward pretty fast. So I don't know that I even had a whole lot of time to reflect on it. Um, I got my first national radio campaign within three weeks of starting training. So it was, it was baptism by fire. I was just thrown into it. Um, so I feel like I'm kind of having to catch up to my dreams and not the other way around. If that makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> it does. I or mean, my dreams are catching up to me rather. Well, I mean, cause mm. you do have a very, I mean, two years and you've already have a number of Thing, campaigns under your belt and probably only a number more to come. I mean, it's interesting to see that you, you are in such a fast forward, right? I mean, it seems like things have been on the go for you. Mm -hmm. And then you create this voiceover success intensive, which I wanted to talk a little bit about. What made you do that? So there, there are a few things. The first is that when I first got started and my friends started seeing what I was doing, they were like, how did you do that? How do I do that? And so um, I have a free ebook that I give away in my, um, on my website. And I thought, you know, instead of having to explain this over and over again or, and talking about it, I could just put something together. And then um, I mentioned that I worked in e-learning before I got into voiceover. Right. And I, I love e-learning. And so I thought I might as well just combine those two and make, you know, instead of making an online course for the company I work for, I mean, I'll make it for myself. And it's a process that I loved so much. I really enjoyed because I knew I loved e-learning, but there was something extra special about making a course that was mine. So um, it, was a, it was a great marriage of, you know, my love for e-learning and my love for voiceover. And to be able to put it together was uh, just a joy. I, I absolutely loved it. And I loved being able to offer it and seeing that people... Um, you know, w grew from it and that they learned a lot from it and, and enjoyed it. Now, not to call anybody out in particular, but have, are any of your students actually picking up jobs? Yes, they are. Very, very exciting. So um, I don't know, do you know Kat from our, from the first class that yes. you were in? So she's booked several jobs. Um, I actually know of a student, let's see, at least two that booked jobs last week, a third who booked one this week. He doesn't even know he booked it yet. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, I think he'll be finding out today. Um, and then there are some others. I have a student who's been doing things on Fiverr. Uh, there are others who are doing kind of um, audiobooks. There have been several people who've booked audiobooks. Um, so, yeah, there are some e-learning jobs that some people have booked, YouTube videos. So, yeah, they're, they're booking work. So, wow. I mean, you even said Fiverr. So the, <laughs> the possibilities are endless? Is that safe to say? Oh, goodness. Endless. Um, I mean, voiceover is everywhere. It, it depends on what level you want to get in on. You could start a YouTube channel and start doing your own voiceovers for free. You know, so in that sense, absolutely, the possibilities are endless. Um, but yeah, there's, again, that there's that spectrum of hobbyist, Fiverr to multimillionaire, 
movie trailers. So the possibilities are definitely vast. I don't know if they're endless, but um, there's a lot out there. And especially if you, if you, you know, have a certain industry in mind that you want to target, um, there, there are a lot of possibilities out there. Now, did you watch the movie um, In a World? Yes. What did you think of that? Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, In a World <laughs> was um, Lake Bell. She mm-hmm. wrote and directed this movie, which is essentially about voiceover. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that and its portrayal of the voiceover industry? Accurate? Totally off? What? <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. Um, I mean, for no other reason, I think that like Belle's hilarious. And I loved the, the take that she, um, presented a voiceover. I think that in a lot of ways it is accurate. Like there, a lot of voice actors, you know, there, I think in any industry, there are divas. So, um, she kind of focused on that, uh, part of the industry where, you know, a lot of diva type, um, attitudes and, and things like that going on. Um, but, you know, she a lot of things were were real to life, I think. Uh, of course, adding in just that comedic element. So it was kind of over the top. But um, I liked it not only because it was funny, but also because I think it raised the awareness of voiceover because I think a lot of people wouldn't even know that that, again, like I didn't know that that whole part of the world existed. So to make a movie where it's only about that, I think was really neat. And it, it really was a good movie, guys, whether you're in the industry or not. It overall is a great story. Mm-hmm. Um, and to hear that it was a pretty good reflection of the voiceover industry is a good sign as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on iTunes, Amazon. We'll have the link in the show notes. But it it was an indie film, I believe. And it, it was really good. I thought it should have gotten more awards than it did. Me too. I was I was surprised that it, it wasn't bigger than it was. Like I felt like I had to kind of dig to find it and when I watched it I thought that's that's excellent like that could have been a box office hit I thought but you know just for the writing I mean Lake Bell Mm -hmm. did an amazing job directing but Mm -hmm. it I feel like it was under everyone's radar unfortunately but I do watch it and tell me if you disagree guys I don't think you will pretty sure yeah Um, because I'm that confident it was really good it was yeah now you say you want to do like uh we talked about your uh, bucket list, mm-hmm. so, so to speak, but you're also doing the intensive and you have a family. How do you find a balance with everything? I'm still working on that. Uh. <laughs> it's a work in progress. <laughs> and, you know, especially as my career changes and as, you know, family changes and, you know, we moved recently, we were traveling before that, you know, I feel like things are in flux and I have a, an almost two year old and kids that young are just changing all the time. So anytime you find a new norm, the next day, it's just going to be different anyway. <laughs> but, um, but one thing that my, that we do, my husband also works from home. So we've started working together more on, um, it, he helps me a lot with my voiceover stuff as far as my scheduling and, um, and things like that, because I, it, it got to, to a point where it was just too much for me to, um, to, my voiceover career used to be small enough that I could remember all of my jobs in my head and I could say, Oh, I'm doing this today, this tomorrow. And eventually it got past that point. And Derek, my husband is really good about keeping me organized. So now we have a shared calendar and he, uh, we have like a a meeting, (laughs) a formal meeting at least once a week where we sit down and and see what's, what's coming up the next week for us. So that's really helpful. (laughs) No, that's really great. I mean, guys, I don't want you to take the idea that you could just do voiceover and be willy nilly about it. I mean, Mm. it does take a lot of work and practice and training, like Carrie's saying. Oh, it's a business. It's absolutely a business. And if you ignore that part, there's, I would say there, it's impossible to be successful. Um, If you've got a great voice and you've got great training and you're amazing on the talent side, but you can't run a business, you're not going to have a successful voiceover career. Yeah. So while we enjoy all the you know, cartoon characters and commercials that we hear, you know, those people are working hard to to make it happen. So they may be having fun, but they're working hard. Exactly. Yeah. There's a reason that, you know, that the pay rates are what they are for when you get up to those things, like you said, cartoons, you know, it's, they can't just grab someone off the street and say, do you want to have a good time? Come in here and read, (laughs) read these scripts. (laughs) You know, there, there's a reason that the rates are what they are. It's, it's work. Yeah. And like any other job, I mean, you treat this as a job, right? Absolutely. 
Yeah, you have to because your clients are, you know, a lot of times they're on deadlines. So if I'm treating it willy nilly and they're saying I need this recording back by Tuesday and I don't get it to them, then they suffer for that. So, you know, I'm not going to get repeat clients if I'm not honoring my clients time um, and their, you know, what they're asking for their wishes. So um, you have to be organized. Listen, do you get repeat clients? I do. They're one of my favorite things. <laughs> does make it easier when you've worked with them before, I guess. Absolutely. And, and it's just nice when, um, you know, at the beginning of your career, you're doing a lot of outreach. You're doing a ton of auditioning and maybe marketing and networking. And it's nice when the day comes when you're, you know, sitting down at lunch and you get an email that says, hey, you booked a job because so-and-so needed more work. And, you know, it feels like the all of the effort at the beginning is starting to pay off. And um, so, yeah, all of that work that you do at the beginning Eventually, if you can get those repeat clients, you can uh, book those jobs without having to audition every time and without having to reach out to someone else. You know, it's just it just comes in. Uh, and if you get enough of those, then it's really, really nice. I just I, I love your story. I love that, you know, you found something you love and you're doing it and you're essentially you're, you're living your dream. And that just makes me excited. And that's why I had to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. And I love that you do this. And uh, yeah, when you first signed up, I saw that you had this, but I, I love your show. And, um, you know, just the fact that you do focus on people who are out there trying to make their dreams happen. I think it's it's important and it's encouraging for those of us who are, uh, you know, still working towards that. Well, thank you. I, you know, I, it's because people don't know necessarily what they want to do. And sometimes they mm. just need to hear it. Exactly. And so as someone who is, chasing their dream, what is one piece of advice uh, that you would give someone, whether it's a, a book to read or, you know, ad- advice, whatever it is? Yeah. So for me, the the biggest thing that I can tell, especially if you're not familiar with the voiceover industry, maybe this is your first introduction to it, or you've, um, you know, not not super aware of how the industry works, just be persistent. If it's something that you want to do, I think a lot of people have the idea that there's this it factor and that you'll, you know, you'll get a coach and you'll do a read and your coach will say, oh, you're perfect. Go to Hollywood, you know? Um, and that, I don't think that's the case for anybody. I think for everyone, it takes, it takes work. It takes practice. It takes intention. So, um, don't get discouraged if you start practicing and you realize that you're not quite where you thought you were when you first started, you know, when you got the idea to get going, but, um, keep, be committed to improving. And as long as you're improving, that that's that's all you can really ask for at the beginning. So just keep working towards uh, your goals. Keep uh, practicing, um, reading, getting training, and give yourself time to, quote unquote, get there. And I don't know that any of us ever get there, but just don't be discouraged. It's all about um, perseverance and working hard. That's some great advice because I think a lot of us or some people think, you know, everyone's an overnight success, but that mm-hmm. overnight success is years in the making. Exactly. And even stories like mine where it's like, you know, well, it, you booked these jobs within weeks of starting your training. But like we talked about, I was narrating courses. I was doing uh, podcasting. I had done dozens of webinars. Uh, so I lots of experience behind a microphone even before my first training. So, um, you know, like you said, people who look like overnight successes, there were things there, you know, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are all kinds of things below the surface that went into that quote unquote overnight success. I'm glad you said that because I think I don't want people to come off with the wrong idea. I mean, I think you've done an amazing job and you've really worked hard for where you're at, but you worked hard for where you're at. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not something, even if it took you a few weeks to get your first gig, you had some, you had some life experience that helped you get there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and invested in, you know, having a mentor and having a coach and, and, you know, putting in that investment is so important as well. Now she's not going to say it guys. And I, it, that's because how, how wonderful she is. If you are interested, I would definitely tell you to check out Carrie's voiceover intensive. She's still continuing it, Right. Mm -hmm. And I learned so much from it. And there is ongoing support. There's a forum. There's a closed group. There's a lot of benefit to it. So if you are interested in the voiceover industry and want to get more information, I would highly encourage you. And this is someone who has done it. Okay. So I'm not just 
you know, talking out my wazoo or whatever. I've actually <laughs> done the course. I've done the practice with her and stuff um, and loved it. And I, I would encourage you to check it out. It's the links will be in the show notes. So definitely take a look there. And Carrie, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your story. Thank you for having me, Amy. This was so great. And I'm so, so humbled to hear you. Um, I, I'm so glad that your experience in the, in the course was great. Um, yeah, thank you so much. This has been awesome. And that was Carrie Olson. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing her dream chase story and all the lessons she's learned as much as I enjoyed having her on the show. She's a wonderful friend and I'm so excited that we were able to get her on here. Now, what she was saying is very important, guys. The world of voiceover is wide and vast and can be pretty scary by yourself. Definitely look into it. Do some research, study, check out Carrie's voiceover intensive, read a book, do something. You just want to have some kind of guide or mentor or somebody to help you through the process. But the big important thing is it's possible. That's what I want you to get out. If you want to do voiceover, it is possible. You just have to put in the work. Okay. So you can find all the show notes and all the links mentioned today on the show notes page for this episode at ChasingDreamsHQ.com slash episode 33. That's episode 33. Until next time, Dream Chasers, keep chasing. Thank you so much for listening to Chasing Dreams. Amy would love to connect with you and hear all about your pursuit of chasing your dreams. Connect with her on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram via at Chasing Dreams HQ. Or you can find Amy on Twitter at AmyJ21. That's A-I-M-E-E-J-2-1. Be sure to visit headquarters over at ChasingDreamsHQ.com for more inspiration, motivation, and resources to help with your own dream chase. We hope you'll join Amy next week. And until then, keep chasing. Keep chasing.